Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're going to take a look at the Kia Sorento. Now in the interest of fair reporting, this is actually a 2021 model, but there's really no differences between 2021 and 2022 or even 2023. Some minor changes and additions. Borrowed this model from my friends at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana. And here is the best way to characterize what this vehicle actually is. It has an impressive number of standard and optional features. Lots of second and third row leg room for the class. It's actually very impressive in that respect. And great looking and easy to use infotainment system. And overall, the exterior looks really, really sharp here. So let's talk about what you can find if you're looking for a three row SUV and maybe looking for an alternative to some of the competitors. This is what you have here. A very sharp looking front end. Taking a look here at the headlights, the design really flows in such a way that it gives it kind of a, an almost on the run look. It looks like it's already moving. The very nice large blinker. This is why you want to use your blinkers, folks. You know, I always tell you to use your blinkers and show you how to use them for those of you who don't know. That looks so good. Somebody's going to be looking in their rear view mirror when you're turning right or turning left, depending on which side you're using. They're going to say, wow, that person's a great driver and their blinkers look great too. And taking a look here at the front end, now you're going to have the gloss black right here with the grill. Quite a bit of gloss black here on the front end, the Kia logo. Honestly, that would look great if it was blacked out. Just my opinion. Maybe people like that a little bit more with the chrome look to it. Tell me what you think down in the comments. That gloss black is going to carry over throughout the entire front end here. And here's something that's very interesting. I like the design here, kind of a unique design here with those fog lights down there on the lower portion of the front bumper. And also air curtains built in right here. I don't know how good of a shot we can get of those, but Kerry will show you as best as he can. And the thing about those air curtains right there, allowing air to flow through the bumper and not around, it actually improves the aerodynamics of the vehicle, reduces drag, and improves gas mileage. Speaking of gas mileage, what a great segue to popping the hood open and talking about what's under there. Now, this is a multitasking hood, and you might wonder, why is it a multitasker? Well, if you miss your bicep workout at the gym in the morning, it is unbelievable how heavy this hood is. You wouldn't expect it to be that heavy. And I hate to say it here, but Kia, where are the hydraulic struts to open this hood and hold it up with? At the price point for what you pay for and for all the amenities on the interior, they should be here. So let's talk about what we have under the hood here. You're going to have a 2.5 liter four cylinder regardless, but what are the differences? The 191 horsepower naturally aspirated, or what we have here, the turbocharged 281 horsepower mated to an eight speed automatic transmission. MPG is coming at 22 city and 29 highway. That's not too terribly bad for a vehicle of this size. Okay, let's talk about tire and wheel size. 255, 45, and that 45 series sidewall, this area right here, is pretty meaty. That's going to contribute to a comfortable ride quality or at least improved ride quality. And the nice black rims, 20 inch wheels right there. It looks right being black. Also, you've got plenty of gloss black continuing on from that front end that we talked about earlier here with the trim around the wheel wells and continuing on on the side of the vehicle on the mirror caps. It's pretty much everywhere you look. All right. Let's take a look at the rear and something I like here is the design of the rear taillights it very much looks somewhat similar to the Telluride, not as large, but again, this is the different class of SUV, so it's not going to be as large. The Kia logo right here again, I think that would look really good, at least on this particular exterior color to have the logo and Sorrento down here in black. Well, you know, tell me what you think in the comments about that. Now, let me show you something interesting here that you may not know about these. Kia Sorrentos. Notice where the door stopped. If I walked up to the door, well, I would probably just ugh, get a headache, right? That's too low for me. So I'm going to push it up there and I'm going to hold this button down right here and listen for the beeps. Just hold it down. What that means is I've reset the height of the door. So you might be somebody that says that door's too high for me. I can't reach all the way up there. 
That's all you have to do to change the height of that door. Very easy, very simplistic, no big deal. Now, we'll start off here. I apologize that all the floor mats and everything are back here, but it just is what it is. I'm gonna show you what is in here. Here are all the tools to change a tire. You know that spare tire is located underneath the vehicle. I showed you that earlier in the undercarriage shot. Quite a bit of space in there. Now, pretty easy to do this. We've got the rear seats here. After all, this is a three row SUV. So you've got the rear seats very easy to lower. In fact, if I can get my hand in there. So there we go with those. Now, the one thing I think could be done a little bit differently here. I hate to do this, Kia. I'm sorry. Let me change positions with Carrie here and I'll come over to this side. But notice how far forward the switches are right here. What are those switches for? It's for lowering the middle row seats. See that? I'm going to push that and push that and down go the seats. There's also a 12 volt power outlet right there. And I'll let Carrie give you a really good shot of the interior there and tell you about cargo capacity. 12.6 up to 75.5 cubic feet. So there is quite a bit of space there to say the very least when you maximize your cargo space. Now, the one thing I have to sound the gong on here on the rear end are the faux exhaust outlets right here. I mean, when, when you just have a spot right there that's closed off, you might as well not even have that. I know all the Volkswagen SUVs have that. There's others on the market that do. Honestly, if you're going to do that, just don't put them on there. Just have a nice consistent look here without the faux exhaust outlets. I don't know. That just seems a little bit strange to us car guys, but then again, not everybody notices. All right, I'm going to start off here in the middle row. And one thing to show real quick, when it comes to the rear seats, you can move these forward. There's a latch underneath each side so that rear seat passengers can have more leg room. Now we will show more about that in just a minute, but I wanted to start here and show you, you've obviously got your grab handle right here map reading lights right there. And then Carrie can show you the sunroof right there. We've got the panoramic sunroof, something that you can't get on every single competitor. That's a good thing if you're looking for that. And the dual air conditioning vents right here. But one thing that I think is a little bit strange when it comes to this rear console area is you have the 12 volt power outlet right there and you have the single USB port right there. That's a little bit strange. And here's why. So what I'm gonna do, there is a button on the top of the seat up here, and there's also one on the side you can hit to do the exact same thing. So what's gonna happen when you hit one of those buttons, it's going to move the seat forward for you. I don't have to worry about anything other than hitting that button and hopping into the back seat. And these seats are really, really low, by the way. So, wow. There is a decent amount of leg space back here, but I just feel so low back here. I mean, it's low rider heaven, I guess, if you like that kind of thing. It does have a little bit of a recline to it, so that's kind of nice. But something that's interesting back here, you have the single USB port, and yes, you could buy an adapter to fix that for the middle row passengers. Here in the rear, there's seating for two, and there are two USB ports, one on each side. And then I'll let Carrie show you, you've got kind of an area to put your snacks and everything right here if you want to, and the cup holder, it almost seems like that should be reversed. The cup holder should be here, and this little slot right here for your snacks and whatever you want to put there should be back here. Just my thinking on the matter. All right, starting off here with the passenger side, I'll let Carrie show you the door panel over there. You're going to notice a pretty good sized door bin. The rear doors didn't have much of a door bin, just enough for a bottle maybe there, but it's a little more space there. Now, the one thing that I'm curious about here is what you think about this. Other than the armrest right there, pretty much all of the materials and this lid for the console, everything else in here is hard plastic. So much is done so well here, but there just seems to be too much hard plastic here. I don't know, just something I noticed. Going to have nice power adjustable seats, so everything is easy to use. A little bit of bolstering right there. Pretty comfortable. Has a nice design, although it would be nice to see it kind of broken up by maybe a different color here in the center. Maybe some piping with a different color and contrast stitching. But if you like the black interior, well, you're going to love this. That's for sure. And we'll take a look into the 
glove box there. As always, a gloveless glove box, but yet it's called a glove box anyway. So we're gonna hit the start button here for the engine and get that going. And start off here, I'll let Carrie show you the instrument cluster here, a very nice look. It looks good, it looks modern. Yeah, we have a, a spare tire or a tire that needs some air right there, as you can see. But everything there you need to know, obviously you can make some changes there via the steering wheel mounted controls that we have right here. And then again, that chrome Kia badge right there on the horn, the horn button right there, that should be black. I just really think it should be. I think that would look a lot better. And so when it comes down to technology and everything here, let's take a look at the infotainment screen. And the first thing I'm going to do is put this Sorrento into reverse and let you see what you have there. A good clear view, pretty much. We do have the sun kind of shining in brightly, so you have a little bit of brightness right there. I don't think that'd be an issue otherwise, but a pretty clear view. And obviously you have some sensors around the vehicle and all that kind of stuff, as you can see right here, it's gonna let you know when you're close to something and built-in navigation. I know a lot of you desire that built-in navigation where you don't have to use your phone if you don't want to via Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then it's kind of interesting right here. It says map. Okay, so you know what that is, but then it says nav right there. Kind of interesting. Shouldn't that be navigation or I don't know, it just doesn't seem right that that would be what takes you to this screen. I guess it allows you to navigate through the infotainment screen and get to everything that you need to see. Let's see if we can get around a little bit here. There we go. And just kind of show you what's here. But obviously a pretty easy system to use. And maybe you're driving down the road and you're stressed around bad Shreveport drivers like we deal with around your Shreveport Bossier drivers on a daily basis. And you're thinking, ah, I'm so stressed out, I need some ASMR. Well, you have ASMR built in right here. Check this out. The button right there that says media. I'm gonna press that and listen to this. Calm sea waves. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't really like that. What about rainy day? Almost sounds like a leaky faucet in a bathroom, but that's what it is. And then here we go with the open air cafe, if I can push on that, there we go. I hope you can hear that. And warm fireplace, as opposed to what, a cold fireplace? So you can hear that. And here's one that I think is really interesting. It's called Snowy Village, but to me it should be someone walking in the snow. <laughs> and you have a couple others here. We won't go through everything. Well, let's see, what does a lively forest sound like? That sounds more like a calm forest than a lively forest, don't you think? <laughs> okay, enough of that. Let's take a look at our dual zone climate control here. You got everything you need to deal with that. That helps. And then underneath, we're gonna find some connectivity here. Now you have a couple of USB ports like you should. Here is the wireless charging pad. Let me, let me show you the wireless charging pad here and we'll let my phone start charging. There you go, you can kind of see that. And then on each side here on the center console, you've got your controls for heated seats. You have three different levels for the heated seats. We don't need those today. We could use the ventilated seats because it is warm enough to do that. And for those of you who don't like push button shifters, you have your gear selector here, the shifter, more of a traditional style to control that eight speed automatic transmission. And then I'm gonna have Carrie show you the button right here or the dial. And then we'll go up here to the instrument cluster and I'll run through the driving modes for you just so you can see there are multiple driving modes. You can drive an eco, sport, whatever you want to. Pretty simple to figure that out. It just goes around and then when you get to one of these on the bottom and you keep pushing or pulling or rotating, I should say rotating the lever, the uh, dial, let's get that right, it stops. So you have to go back the other way just so you know. Kind of an interesting thing. And then a few other one-touch options here. You can turn off that pesky auto stop-start feature that even if you have a beefed up starter on your vehicle, that feature is still really bad for the bottom end of your motor, for the crankshaft and the bearings. Some of you might. Okay, we're out on the road. And I must say, 
let the engine speak for me, but I am actually quite impressed with how this little Sorrento gets down the road. 281 horsepower, actually kind of fun to drive. It handles pretty well. I do have to say, even though it probably varies a little bit, this being a used model, uh, the brakes are a little soft, but that could just be the pedal itself. It does seem to stop okay, but I'm actually very impressed at how much fun this is to drive, just kind of cruising down the road here without any trouble. Wow, a little turbocharged 2.5 liter four cylinder does a really good job of getting down the road. In fact, let's just do an acceleration test. We'll just come down here and come to a complete stop and see how it does. There's nobody around, so we can do this. Here we go. A little bit of tire spin there. I chirped the tires a couple of times. Wow. So if... if unexpected? Yeah, it was a little unexpected. If, if you're having kind of a tough day in your Sorrento and you want to get out there, or a tough day in general, and you want to get out there and drive spiritedly, well, I would definitely recommend the turbocharged engine option because <laughs> this thing is fun to drive. Handling not too bad. It didn't go through the corner very hard there or very fast, but it seemed to handle the corner pretty well. So the handling capabilities of the Sorrento also good. Everything here is easy to use. I like the fact that it's easy to use or learn. For those of you who are still driving in vehicles from the 1990s or even early 2000s that didn't have all this technology, the, the infotainment screen and all that kind of stuff, well, don't let it bother you. Some of these vehicles are easier to learn than others. I'd say that the Kias are, are pretty simple to learn compared to some of the other vehicles out there. But overall, a very nice and enjoyable vehicle to drive. It's very zippy. It gets around easily. It's nimble. If you're living in a really large city and you need to be able to maneuver around in a smaller vehicle, but still have a reasonable amount of cargo capacity and three rows of seating if you need that, well, this might be a really good option for you. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Is the Kia Sorento worth the price? It definitely has some very interesting features and some very solid features. In fact, here's something we didn't talk about earlier, but if you leave the ignition on as we have so that some of the lights are on around the vehicle and you close the door, There, it finally stopped. It lets you know that the ignition is on. I do have the remote in my pocket, so that's not an issue, but just something I thought was very interesting. Gotta say a special thanks to my friends at Holmes Honda for loaning us this Kia Sorento for the day, and all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and you want to know about other vehicles that we've reviewed here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.